Hello everybody. Here we are going to see about classes, objects and methods in Java. Defining a class, field declaration, method declaration, creating objects and accessing the class members are the topics which we are going to cover here. Now we are going to see about how we are going to define a class. So generally class is called as a user defined data type. We are aware that the data type is of two types, uh, built-in data type and user-defined data type. Uh, we know the built-in data types, integer, float, character, everything. So if you are going to create user-defined data type, we can create it as a class. So once if you have created a class, you can create any number of instance of that particular class. That is, if you are going to declare a variable a as integer you can declare b c everything as integer also like that once when you have created a class it is possible for us to create any number of instance or you will you'll call it as objects you can create any number of objects and you can access the class through the objects right so now the syntax for the classes you will have the keyword class followed by the class name while you are giving the class name, it is a good practice to start the class name with the capital letter always. So within the class, you will have the field declarations and the method declarations. So everything has to be enclosed within the curly brace. Right now, let us see an example how we have created a class. We have created a class called student with the instance variables, roll number, mark 1 that is m1, m2, m3 and total which belongs to the built-in data type integer. Then if you want to calculate average, generally average will be in decimal point. So we are declaring it as float. So totally we have got uh, roll number m1, m2, m3 total and average to be the instance variable of the class student. Let us take another example. Here we have created a class called rectangle where we have only two data members that is the instance variable width and height both belongs to float. How we are going to declare the fields? So in Java we call the data members as fields. The variables or you can call it as an instance variable. Say for example here we are creating a class called rectangle. So the rectangle will have the variables as length and width. So you will be giving the data type followed by the variable name or you can call it as an instance variable. So the variables which you are going to declare within the class are called as instance variable. Then so as I said earlier class will have the variables and the functions that is methods in Java we call it as methods. So your class will have the data and the function that is going to use the data. So in Java we call the data as the instance variable or you will call it as field. Then the methods in Java we call it as methods. In all the in C++ if you take we will call that to be a function. So the function can be called as methods in Java. So mainly when you are going for method declaration there will be four different things which you have to do. A method should have a name, then it should have a written type and the parameters that is the information which you want to pass to the function for its operation and the actual body of the function. So the syntax is like this, the type written type. So if you don't have any written type, we have to give it as void, then name of the method. So while you are giving name of the method, the standard um, rule has to be followed for framing the method method name then followed by the parameter list so here, here the parameter list is an optional one if you want to pass any parameters that is the information to the method you can give otherwise you can leave it blank then it will be followed by the method body the method body should be enclosed within the curly brace so this is an example for a class so you'll have the keyword class followed by the name of the class Generally, the name of the class will begin with the capital letter that we know. Then it will have the variables length and width which is of type integer. Then the uh, method 
which it's going to access length and width is get data so now see there the method doesn't return any value so we are given it as void then the name of the function is get data so since we are using uh, two different words the middle is uh, defined as in capital letter to indicate that it is a method name followed by two parameters x and y so you are going to pass the value for x and y while you are calling the method get data on the same will be assigned as the value for the fields which we have declared in the class then how we are going to create the objects object we know it as a um, block of memory that contains space to store the instance variable so once when you are creating a class on each successful creation of an object memory is allocated for the instance variable so while you are creating the object no memory will be allotted for the instance variable only when we are creating the object the memory will be created so we call the creating the object as instantiating here in java we have to create the object for any class by using the new operator so this is how we have to create the object for the class which we have uh, defined earlier rectangle is the name of the class followed by rect the object name then rect is you have to instantiate that is you are going to create a um, memory for the instance variables of the rectangle class rect is equal to new rectangle it is also possible for us to combine both the statements and give it as a single statement like the syntax which you can see class name followed by the object name is equal to new class name of so here both the reference and the memory is going to be allocated by a single statement but in the previous case what we did we have created the object by using the class name then you have instantiated separately with the help of the new operator you have created the object i mean memory so here we have combined both the statements as a single statement so for example rectangle is a class name rect is the object name is equal to the new operator followed by rectangle of the class name right can create any number of objects it's not restricted to one two or three you can create any number of objects once if you have successfully created a class so each object will have its own copy of the instance variable that means the memory for each object will be allocated separately that is within the object you will have the memory for the instance variable so object 1 will have its own memory for the instance variable object 2 will have the ins uh, memory for the instance variable separately so in this example r1 is one object r2 is one another object r1 will have the memory for length and width in the same way r2 will also have the memory for length and width now we have created a uh, class successfully with the instance variable and methods now you should know how to access how to call the instance variables and the methods actually the instance variable and methods cannot be accessed directly like the normal variable or the normal methods it can be accessed only with the help of the dot operator now see the syntax object name dot variable name is equal to value so uh, see here the dot operator links the object name and the variable name here the variable name is nothing but the instance variable name then object name dot the method name followed by the parameter list if you want to pass any parameters you have to pass it so the dot operator acts as a link between the object name and the corresponding member of a class so in order to access the member of a class it is necessary for us to use the dot operator along with the object name directly an instance variable cannot be called in the same way the method of a class cannot be called directly now see an example rect dot length is equal to 15 where rect is a object name and length is an instance variable in the same way rect dot width is equal to 10 width is an instance variable rect is an object now if you want to call the method get data by passing the values 50 and 25 you have to call 
it with the object name dot get data of 50 comma 25. So here is a complete program which shows uh, how we have to create a class, the instance variable, how we are going to call the methods. So already we saw the class name is rectangle. It is having length and width to be the instance variable of type integer and it is having a method called get data so that it is going to receive the value of x and y while it is being called and the same is going to be assigned as the value of length and width. Then you have another method in the class called rect area which is going to return an integer value to the place of calling where here you are going to calculate area of the rectangle. So area is equal to length into width. Here area is not an instance variable. It is local to the method rect area. So its life will be only within the rect area method. So after calculating the area value, you are returning by using the return statement. Now since the method, main method of Java has to reside within a class, we have created a class called rect area. Here you have created the main where I have created two variables area 1 and 2 and see here we have created two objects what are they rect1 and rect2 and you have allocated the memory for it by using the new operator. Then with the help of the first object that is rect1 I have assigned the value 15 to the length of the uh, length that is the instance variable and width as 10 by using the object name rect1. Then I have calculated area 1. How? By multiplying the length value that is in rect1 and the width value that is in rect1. Then I am going to call rect2 that is a get data method from the object rect2 by passing 20 and 12. Now the value of 20 and 12 will be saved as the value for the length and width instance variable. Then I am calculating the area 2 by calling rect area method. How I, uh, how I have called by using the second object rect 2 dot rect area of. So that the value of 20 into 12 will be assigned and it will be returned to the place of calling that is area 2 will have the result and I am displaying the area 1 and area 2. Here is another example for the class called student where we have the roll number m1, m2, m3 and total average. I am going to use a get data method. Here I have not passed any arguments. Directly I have assigned the roll number m1, m2 and m3. There is another method called calc method which is going to calculate the total as well as it is going to calculate the average. Then here the main method just I have created the object for the student class right. Then I have called both the methods by using the object which I have created that is yes.getData and yes.calc. That's all about this presentation.